Peace and welcome to our story time, brought to you by our Niagara Falls Underground Railroad Heritage Center and produced by the Atlanta School for Gifted Youngsters. You know, kids, reading is very important because through books you can learn about yourself and the world around you. Through our story time, we're going to share with you some amazing books, and I know you're going to enjoy today's story. So grab your healthy snacks, sit on back, and enjoy today's story. Frederick Douglass, written by Barbara Kramer, read with permission by National Geographic Kids. Who was Frederick Douglass? Frederick Douglass was born enslaved. He worked hard for his enslaver for no money. His enslaver told Douglass where to live, what to eat, and what to do. After 20 years of being enslaved, Douglas escaped. He began speaking out against slavery. He didn't stop until all enslaved people were free. Then he helped to work free enslaved people have better lives. Words to know. Enslaver. Master. A person who owns enslaved people. Slavery. The practice of owning enslaved people. Born enslaved. Douglas was born in February 1818 on a farm in Talbot County, Maryland, USA. Soon after his birth, his mother was sent to work on another farm. Douglas only saw her four or five times. She died when he was seven. He never knew his father. Douglas spent his early years with his grandparents. They lived in a cabin about 12 miles from his enslaver's farm. When Douglas was about six years old, his grandmother took him to their enslaver's farm. She didn't want to leave him there, but she had to do what their enslaver said. Douglas knew then that he was expected to obey the enslaver too. About two years later, Douglas was sent to Baltimore, Maryland to work. He had heard stories about that city and was excited to go in his time. In the 1820s, growing up enslaved was very different from growing up as a child who was free. School. Enslaved people did not attend school. Teaching an enslaved person to read was against the law in some states. In education, would give an enslaved person power. Events. Some people helped enslaved people escape from their enslavers. The group of people who led enslaved people to safety was called the Underground Railroad. Travel. Enslaved people who traveled without their enslavers had to carry a pass from their enslavers. Black people who were free had to carry papers stating that they were not enslaved rights. Enslaved people had no rights. Enslaved people were listed as property along with the enslaver's animals. They could be sold to another enslaver at any time, often separating children from their parents. Freedom. When their enslavers died, a few enslaved people were given their freedom, but most got new owners so they were still not free. Sometimes enslaved people could buy their freedom, but since most enslaved people did not earn money for their work, that rarely happened. Words to know. Freedom. The power to move or act as you wish and to do what you want to do. Learning to read. In Baltimore, Douglas worked for Hugh Auld and his wife. He took care of their young son and ran errands. Mrs. Auld started teaching Douglas to read. Mr. Auld told her to stop. He said enslaved people should know only one thing, how to obey their enslaver. But Douglas kept learning. He gave biscuits to poor white children he met on his errands. In return, they helped him read. When Douglas was 15, he was sent back to the farm. His enslaver had died. He now had a new enslaver. Douglas had to work hard in the field. 
he was often treated badly. He tried to escape, but he was caught. Other enslavers were angry. Douglas had set a bad example for the people they enslaved. To avoid trouble, Douglas's new enslaver sent Douglas back to Baltimore to work for the Auld family again. Enslaved people often worked long hours in the fields. They worked on a large farm or a group of farms called a plantation. That's a fact. When Douglas was working as an enslaved person in the field, he held secret classes to teach other enslaved people to read. Runaway slave, AKA a freedom seeker. In Baltimore, Douglas met free black people. He fell in love with a free black woman named Anna Murray. More than ever, he wanted to be free. On September 3, 1838, he tried to escape again. He headed north by boat and train. If he were caught, he might be killed or sold. But he made it to New York, a free state. He sent for Anna, and they got married. Words to know. Free state a U.S. state that did not allow people to own enslaved people. That's a fact. Over time, Douglas and Anna had five children, three boys and two girls. Douglas and Anna moved to New Bedford, Massachusetts, USA. There, Douglas met people who wanted to abolish slavery. In 1841, he spoke at one of their meetings. Douglas told the crowd about his life as an enslaved person. The people liked his speech. Douglas soon began traveling to many states giving speeches about slavery. He also wrote a book about his life as an enslaved person. Words to know. Abolish. To officially stop something such as a law. In his own words, I long to have a future a future with hope in it. Douglas had escaped, but he was still enslaved. Soon he became well known for his speeches and his book. That put him in danger. Now it was easier for his master to find him. Douglas had to get away, but it meant leaving his family behind. He sailed to England. He gave speeches there and made many friends. They raised money to buy his freedom. At last, Douglas was free. Many people wanted to hear Douglas speak. He talked about the abolition of slavery, which is the act of ending slavery. Six cool facts about Douglas. Number one, as a young man in Baltimore, Douglas learned to play the violin. It was a hobby he enjoyed the rest of his life. Number two, Douglas met with President Abraham Lincoln three times during the Civil War. After the president died, Mrs. Lincoln gave her husband's favorite walking stick to Douglas. Number three, Douglas became active in the Underground Railroad. His home in Rochester, New York was a stopping place. Runaway freedom seekers could hide there until it was safe to travel to the next stop. Today, people can visit there. Number four, Douglas was known as a great storyteller. He often made family, friends, and audiences laugh with his tales. Number five, Douglas wrote three books about his life, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, My Bondage and My Freedom, and Life and Times of Frederick Douglass. Number six, in 1899, four years after Douglas died, a statue of him was built in Rochester, New York. It was the first time an African-American was honored with a statue. A fight to end slavery. In 1847, Douglas returned to the United States. He moved his family to Rochester, New York. There he started a newspaper called the North Star. He wrote articles against slavery for the paper. When enslaved people tried to escape, they looked up to the sky and followed the North Star. That is how the paper got its name. People in the United States did not agree about slavery. That led to the start of the Civil War in 1861. Douglas organized a group of African Americans to fight in that war. 
That's a fact. Two of Douglas's sons were among the first African Americans to sign up to fight in the Civil War. Charles Douglas and Louis Douglas. Words to know. Civil War. A war between different groups of people from the same country. New beginnings. The Civil War led to the end of slavery, but black people were still not treated the same as white people. Douglas gave speeches about treating all people the same. In his own words, I would unite with anybody to do right and with nobody to do wrong. That's a fact. Douglas also gave speeches about allowing women to vote. In 1882, Anna got sick and died. Douglas was sad and lonely. About two years later, he married Helen Pitts. That upset many people because Helen was white. Douglas never stopped speaking to help others. On February 20th, 1895, he gave a speech to a woman's group. He died at home later that day. He was 77 years old. Douglas was a powerful voice for people who believe that all people should be treated equally. Today, his words still inspire others all over the world. In his own words, abolition of slavery had been the deepest desire and the great labor of my life. Frederick Douglass.